Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Marco and today we are continuing Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, episode number 4. I still can't get over the fact that there is a bunch of really precious and dope characters dying in all the shows I'm watching right now and it's kind of too much. Yeah, we didn't get to see much of Rico, but did, did we really need to see much more? Was there anything more to explain? She was just innocent, pure, naive, sweet girl, man, who felt different, right, and felt lonely without parents, with her maid Kuroi being her only family. And the author did it so well, he made it much, much more worse by allowing her to reach, to almost reach Dengen and for her to realize that she actually wants to live and my boys Gojo and Geto were already talking about that and they were fully ready to accept whatever her choice is, man, despite the principal and the higher-ups and Dengen what they wanted, man. They are such amazing guys. That was incredible. And after all of that, she still gets shot in the head. That broke my heart. And I can imagine how Geta felt at that moment. He was about to take her arm and she just drops dead in front of his eyes. And I'm pretty sure that this is going to lead towards the ghetto that we knew from season 1 and the movie, man. And it breaks my heart. Gojo. Gojo who is like the god, the, the strongest Jujutsu sorcerer, man. Who said that he would win in battle against Sukuna even if he had 20 fingers. The almighty Gojo getting absolutely annihilated by Fushiguro was something that I didn't see coming. I was talking about it last episode, how I expected Fushiguro to be a challenging opponent for Gojo, but I did not expect Gojo to get fucking murdered by him so easily. I do like that there are things that can get through Gojo, right? Like that cursed weapon that breached his limitless. That caught him off guard, man, even with his senses, with his six eyes, right? And all of that he was not able to avoid or to, to uh, block that attack with his infinity, man. And he, I'm so curious to see how does he come back after that. He got stabbed. He got stabbed so many times and the way Shigura tore, tore apart his like torso with the knife, man. It was so brutal. This whole season. Jesus Christ. Man. I'm not sure how is Gojo coming back, back after that. And of course, Geto being in complete shock, man. Seeing Rico die, learning that Gojo is dead, and he immediately pulls out his curses and he says die and he attacks Fushiguro and that's how we end man. Fushiguro is a beast bro. He is a freaking beast. He is like Maki. Uh, he's, uh, he has no cursed energy but he has the heavenly pact just like Maki and Mekamaru right? That's given to him at birth for physical prowess I guess. That's why he's so fast and strong and I guess it's not only because of the pact. He looks like a beast and he's probably doing this for a very long time to earn the title Sorcerer Killer. That is absolutely insane. The first half of the episode, the enjoyment with Rico, man, they are not pulling any punches, man, when it comes to sheer brutality and depression this season. <laughs> I don't know what to say, guys. It's honestly insane. Rest in peace, Rico. <sighs> Let's see what happens next. Let's begin, guys.
Wow, guys. Absolute peak. The best episode without a doubt. Man. That was way too perfect. From the very beginning, of course, the fight between Geto and Fushiguro was insane. And I like the details how Fushiguro is also storing these weapons. And that's the ability that our boy Megumi kind of was using last season, right? It was a huge reveal that he was able to keep like these weapons that he handed to Maki during the fight against Hanami. And now we see his father doing something similar. And he is thinking things through a lot, man. He's keeping that curse inside of his stomach because he doesn't have cursed energy and it's if it's because it's inside of his organ, it's invisible as well, even to six eyes wielder, like Gojo Satoru. That's crazy. He planned everything. He is so damn smart. Uh, when it comes to strength, I don't know if it's necessary to, to mention how freaking of a beast he is he even defeated Geto, who had a bunch of those curses man he still managed to do it with ease man that guy is just too, too good man holy shit and he also talked about monkeys without cursed energy man and Zenin clan probably treated him like dog shit as well because he had no cursed energy so similar to maki yet another similarity between maki and this guy fushiguro that's crazy Th those scenes of that leader of the religious group talking man I, I was so annoyed, man. I didn't even care for that shit, man. Yeah, I understood that they are crazy bastards who worship Tengen and that they didn't want him to assimilate with Rico. Who they think is, uh, they thought that Rico is like dirty, right? She's regular human, and it would be like disrespect to their like almighty Tengen. Man. They don't even care what happened. Right, they don't even care if Tengen would evolve and bring society down, they don't care, they just don't want him to merge. And even Fushiguro was saying, like, they're complete lunatics to that guy. Obviously, he cares only about the money and fucking money, bro. It ruined everything. Gojo was not ready for Fushiguro, so he got defeated the first time. But when he made appearance again, that shit was just insane. That was so majestic. It was like he was a god, an angel, and he said that he's like on heaven and dirt, the honored one, and he was like floating in the air, and before that he was so high. His expression, right? He was crazy, and Fushiguro noticed that, da, obviously. He explained that he used reverse curse technique which uh, multiplied negative energy and made it in, into positive one so that he can heal and he said why didn't you go for the head and gojo it's like gojo got a whole new awakening after that and i guess this is the first time that he used hollow purple right because he was struggling to do red in those previous episodes in this episode he did red without any problem and I guess this like this awakening led him to discover all of purple and what Fushiguro said that he will be the strongest Jujutsu sorcerer of modern age and that he's doing all the gigs for the money right and this this time uh, otherwise he would fled he would escape but this time he couldn't resist like facing what appears to be the strongest Jujutsu sorcerer. And I have a feeling that he knew that he was going to die. He kept saying something is off, something is off. And to Gojo he said, I'm going to kill you and stuff that he can handle all his techniques. Like Blue is amplification of Limitless. Uh, and he has like uh, neutral Limitless that like, stops the attacks. Blue is like the amplification of normal. Uh, limitless and red is repelling red is uh 
reversed curse technique, right? I hope I'm getting these things right. It's honestly pretty hard, not only because of how the power system is, but because of these subs as well. They're just way too fast. But yeah, that fight, like, I knew immediately that Gojo was about to annihilate him. The direction of these episodes from Ghetto and Fushiguro staring each other down and talking as they're walking past those like doors and Fushiguro every time doing something differently, the curse appearing, him spitting out that curse. And of course, as he's explaining that, he's gaining power as well. And Ghetto was like, cut the crap, man. But yeah, he still got defeated and we reached that final scene of Gojo carrying out Rico's body. And all these motherfuckers clapping. That has to be one of the most like disturbing scenes it's the feeling you can't really describe of disgust of sadness of everything mixed together right and then gojo states should i kill all of them i doubt i feel anything right now and the fact that ghetto is the one who stopped him but we saw him his eyes ghetto is really shook and i like the contrast in this episode we literally have gojo ascending to heaven becoming the strongest jujutsu sorcerer and it seems like this event is going to start dragging ghetto down as we see in the end of the episode him being surrounded by darkness right and saying that jujutsu sorcerers especially should have a reason to do such things to kill right to have a point because he said that there is no point in killing them because the main people who are leading this religious group left, right? And why would we kill like these common uh, followers? Would that bring any satisfaction at all? Or would that serve any justice? I really like that Ghetto said that, but at the same time, it's definitely a contrast between Ghetto and Gojo and Van going down. After witnessing all this shit with Rico, it's dragging him down and one of them is ascending and literally becoming the strongest. Amazing episode. I think I will end the video here for today, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please consider subscribing, leave a like, comment, all that good stuff as always. Check out my Patreon page if you want to see full and early reactions. I will be seeing you very soon with another video. Until then. Take care and have a nice day. See ya.